Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Starsick. It is lovely to have you here once again after we have been gone for oh so very long. Yes, it is I. I am real, I am alive, and I am back. And we are at the Batania Hut of all places because, you know, I figured to ease us back into the series a little bit after being gone for so long. I think we could start, I think it would be beneficial to start, with a little bit of a filler episode. And when I say filler, I don't mean this thing is going to be absolutely useless and not at all attached to the plot, because if you open up, well, I've already opened up, but if you have a look on the right side of my screen right now, you will see I, I have at blood typed in to the NEI bar, and the reason for that is quite simple. Today, we're going to be working on blood magic. Now, you may be asking yourself, but Drifter, what does blood magic have to do with astral sorcery and the stars? And my answer to that would be absolutely nothing, but you'll find out why I'm doing this in a second. So you all remember when we did Batania, right? We uh, got all of this cool glowing stuff. I think this is liquid mana inside the mana pool in order to get one specific type of stone in order to build one specific part of our base, right? Well, we're doing that again. Except this time, instead of using Astral Sorcery, we are going to have to use Blood Magic, because when you last saw me on this series, I was planning something big, something very big. But it wasn't done, and I didn't have the time to finish it. However, now, obviously, I have had quite a lot of time to finish it. I've had over a year at this point. I think I've had about a year and a half. Um, no, it, it hasn't been that long. Sorry, I think I got it the wrong way around there. I should probably let you know now that I am running on 5 hours sleep over the past uh, 29 uh, hours. So if my words get scrambled up a little bit in my head as they come out of my mouth, that's probably why. I am just a little stupid as well, so just keep that in mind. But yes, in the time that I have been gone, I not only finished the project that I was working on, but I've got it all set up and ready to go. However, there is one thing stopping me, from bringing our brand new Astral Sorcery base onto the server. Can you see where this is going yet? Yes, I built it using a specific block from Blood Magic. In fact, I didn't just use a specific block from Blood Magic. I used quite the few specific blocks from a bunch of different mods that I don't actually have yet. Some of them are simple. Some of them are like benches from, uh, what is it? Mr. Crayfish's Fishes? Fishes? Blah. It's not even a tongue twister and my tongue's getting tied up from Mr. Crayfish's furniture mod, while others can be uh, light or lamp posts or whatever it is they're called in this mod from Simply Lights. And then of course we have the hardest among them to collect, or at least what I think is the hardest among them to collect, which is the warp plates. This thing right here from Waystones, which actually all things considered is probably one of the easier things to build. All you need is uh, an ender pearl and some purple dye, and you get enough warp dust for a single one of these things. Not to mention the fact that they have quite the cheap uh, number of EMC attached to them, if I'm being completely honest. But out of all those blocks, out of every single one of them, the one that I want to document collecting the most is the blood magic one. Not only does documenting the blood magic one give me a perfect excuse to delve into a mod that I've otherwise never touched, but it's also probably the one that's gonna take the longest and would require the most explanation as to how I got. Cause I mean, like I showed you earlier, the warp plate, very simple. The illuminant column, again, very simple. It's just stone, uh, a wall, and a illuminant block, and it can be any of them. And of course, the Oak Park Bench, that's just two logs and six planks, which is probably, you know, yeah, I will class that as the easiest thing that I would be able to get for the build. So yes, that's how today's episode is going to work. We are going to delve into blood magic. So, Drifter from the Future... Let's go! Okay, so having never delved into blood magic before, I think we better start off in the same place that we started off with for Batania, and that is not creating a Batania lexicon, but creating the blood magic equivalent. So if I type in at blood to bring up the blood magic menu, I can see the very first thing in this entire list of things is the sanguine scientium, which I'm guessing is the blood science book, Alchemical Wizardry, as its uh, flavor text says. And to craft this, all we need is a regular book, uh, surprisingly, and a, uh, a block of glass. 
So before I go gallivanting across the place to actually try and find uh, any of the things I need, let's just take a look inside of this chest to see what we actually have left over here. Because to, complete, to be completely honest, like I said, it's been a long time. I don't actually remember. Okay, so we do have quite a lot of glass, which is good. I, I, I suppose that came from uh, when I was schematic cannoning this thing into existence. What? Can you not interrupt me every chance you get, please? Thank you. Right, so, like I was saying, it's probably from when I was schematic cannoning this uh, building into existence. So if we check inside, let's see what else we've got in these chests. Uh, a lot of peaches. Uh, I mean, a lot of, lot of peaches. I mean, this is a ridiculous amount. Uh, two bone meal, six star metal, and an arrow. Six arrows. Down here, we've got 45 oak saplings, blue corundum, two constellation papers that are empty, two stone brick, 14 dirt, Three platinum ore, a wilden spike, 64 mystical brown flowers, and a partridge in a pear tree. Let's see, we've got some inferium, some leads, some leather. More flowers, more Britannia stuff, and even more flowers. So, no books, which means we need to go and find some. Okay, you, what you have to ask yourself is, is it really cheating if you're stealing from yourself? I think that's the biggest um, moral quandary we've got over here. So let's see. We don't have any books left, but I'm pretty sure we have the uh, stuff to make books. Ah, oh, we're down a rat pelt. That's a shame. I thought we could have made some leather. Oh, you can make them out of wilden wings. Nice. Right then, let's drop that in there. Let's craft ourselves a book. And then, you know what, while we're here, let's have a look for some glass. There we go, we've got six glass right there, let's put that there, let's put that book there, and there we go. The Sanguine Scientium. Holy crap, that thing is big in my hand, what the hell? I wish that was what she said, goddamn. Okay, so let's take a look at what this thing actually says. Here we go, welcome to Blood Magic. A lot of stuff, which is not yet implemented, isn't yet implemented, so please excuse our dust. I like how it's got its own little uh, uh, flavor text over here, which is pretty funny. Click here to get started. If you find any bugs, please report them to our GitHub. Right. So, we need to get ourselves... I don't think I even told you what we're working on, actually. Now that I think about it, I think I just told you we were doing blood magic and left it at that. Hold on, let me tell you what we're actually trying to make for a second here. From blood magic, we're actually trying to make... I believe it's either the Warnstone Path or the regular stone path. Now, both are made in the same way. Um, one of them requiring a master blood orb, so I'm just gonna go with a stone path on its own for now, which requires regular stone around a magician or a master blood orb. Now, a magician orb comes from um, a tier three blood altar, I think, and a block of gold. And to make a blood altar, we need marble or any sort of stone, a furnace, and gold. Which, now that I think about it, isn't actually too expensive. Either way, we should probably read what it has to say about these things. One of the central concepts of blood magic is building a glorious ziggurat to focus your power. These pages will guide you in the construction of this masterwork. Blood runes. Oh, Jesus Christ. Acceleration rune, charging rune, displacement rune, rune of augment capacity, rune of capacity, Rune of Sacrifice, Rune of Self-Sacrifice, Rune of the Orb, and Speed Rune. I, I think before I get into modifiers, I should actually know how this damn thing works. Okay, so here we go, the Blood Altar. The Blood Altar is the central block of the mod, able to convert raw blood into pure life essence. While it may start off small and insignificant, its strength and size grows throughout the mod, acting as a cornerstone for your power. Okay. <laughs> When placed into the world, the Blood Altar converts blood into life essence, which it then uses to transfigure items placed into it. By pressing right button while looking at the altar, you may insert one item from your hand into the altar's internal inventory. Pressing right button with an empty hand will extract the item. Let me find some space. Where am I going to put this? I put Batania on one side, which is all about flower power. Let's put blood power over here, shall we? Let's visualize it here. Okay. The tier 1 blood altar, which has no runes, okay. 
In order for you to end life essence, okay, before we get onto this, I think we should actually make the altar. The last thing we want to do when delving into the world of blood ritual sacrifices and all of that good stuff is rush ahead. Because if I end up bleeding my life force all onto this thing, only to find out that I accidentally bled in the wrong place, well, I'd say I'm not going to be very happy, but, um... I, I, I honestly don't think I'd be around to be unhappy anymore. So, let's just rush on back to the shack in here. Let us find the necessary uh, components to build this thing, and let's just hurry up and do it. I'll take you. There we go, we got the furnace. And that is the smooth stone. All nice and snug as a bug in a rug right there. Let's see, what was the next thing we needed? Oh, after that it was just gold ingots. And I'm pretty sure we have an entire block of that back at the Batania hut. Although before we do just head back to the Batania hut, I am very quickly gonna sneakily borrow myself uh, these things right here. Oh god. Ah, uh, okay. Clean up on aisle me. And that should probably cover my butt. I'm sure Ruby won't notice that we've got one of these things missing. I mean, we have got quite the uh, surplus of these now. Right, let's put this over here. And let's just take that. Thank you. Hmm. This isn't going as quick as I'd have hoped. Time for plan B. Again, I'm sure he won't notice one or two of these missing. <laughs> let's, uh, let's flick these on. Okay, so while that's definitely cooking up a second block of gold, what we're going to do over here is we're going to break this block of gold down into the uh, nine iron... Iron? Into the nine golden ingots that comprise it. And right there, we basically have a completed recipe. So if we just hop on over to the crafting table, let's just plop this in and grab the altar. Beep, boop, boop, beep, bing, bong, ding, dong. And there we have it. We have our very own blood altar. So let's grab this now. I'm sure this isn't dangerous at all. <laughs> let's go put this down. Oh god, it feels so strange to just be casually carrying around something known as a blood altar. Will you shut up? Jesus. I need to set up something that automatically kills those things. They are way too annoying. But hopping over back into the book for a second, we can now actually continue on with uh, what we were reading. Now, we got to this point here, where it's teaching us how to make a sacrificial knife. So uh, let's read what it has to say, shall we? Uh, in order for you to add life essence, measured as LP, you first have to craft a sacrificial knife. By pressing right button while aiming at air with the knife, you can extract 200 life points for the cost of one heart. Placing it into a nearby altar, the altar starts with a maximum capacity of 10,000 LP, and the blood level in the basic basin indicates the percentage filled. The divination sigil allows more detailed information about the altar. Keep in mind that 10% of the total LP the altar can hold will be absorbed into an invisible internal tank used for, essen used for extracting and inserting life essence into the altar. The blood altar will attempt to start to craft as soon as an item is placed inside by a player or after a periodic five seconds. The LP inside of the altar will slowly drain, indicated by red particles, transforming the item. If there is no LP in the altar, gray smoke will appear to indicate that the altar is losing progress instead. Okay, and this is just telling us how that works. The first item you will want to craft is a weak blood orb, which is connected to something called a soul network, apparently, which by default is a diamond plus 2000 LP inside of a tier 1 blood altar. All items that can be crafted by the blood altar can be found using just enough items. J.E.I. So, we need a diamond and 2000 life points, which means I'm going to have to stab myself a hell of a lot. I think it said one prick is 100 life points, if I need 2,000, that means I need 20 pricks, which means I need 20 hearts, which, if it counts half a heart as a full heart, so a half heart is 100, that is my entire health bar. If it's a full heart for 100, then that is my full health bar twice. So this ought to be fun. That being said, before I can go all crazy cultist mode, I do actually have to craft the sacrificial knife, so let's get on that. So as stated in the book, to craft the sacrificial knife, we need one iron, one gold, and six, uh, three, four, five, 
bits of glass. Now, we have the glass, we have the gold. What we don't have on us right now is the iron, because this place isn't really all that kitted out to actually deal with uh, staying here long term. No, unfortunately, this was designed to be more of a holiday home that got uh, sort of converted into the, uh, the, 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 uh, <laughs> the side episode place, for lack of a better term. So you remember how we spilled all of that iron on the floor earlier? Uh, let's go get some of that. I'm sure Ruby won't miss, like, a stack of iron, maybe. You know, this is fine. Okay, so over in the crafting table, it's the iron, it's the gold. We need to grab the glass from out here. So if we just, um, yoink that, that's great. We can come in here and we can start work on the knife. So, little, uh, right angle of glass, a, uh, golden handle, or a, a golden middle bit, I guess and an iron handle, and there we go, we have the sacrificial knife. So, I am never gonna get used to saying this, but let's go stab ourselves, guys. Okay, now, according to the book, this said I just had to right-click while being near the altar, right? So if I just, um... Ah, there we go. I'm a little concerned that my blood looks like a mix between lava and cotton candy. But, um, I guess I'm just that hot and sweet. So, now if we just keep stabbing ourselves, assumably, this is eventually gonna fill up with enough blood that we're gonna be able to actually, uh, get a, uh, a, a diamond out of this. Now, it looks like it is actually going down, uh, quite significantly and quite quickly, so I'm gonna assume that I need to do this all as one thing. So, with that in mind, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these peaches, I'm gonna heal on up so I have full health, and then I'm gonna go back to the Anadonia shack, and I'm actually gonna grab some of the golden apples we've got there, so that way I have the regeneration effect. And then, obviously with the regeneration effect, I'll be able to bleed just enough that I'll be able to convert the diamond into, uh, you know, a, a, a low-tier blood orb, I believe it said it was. You know, some cultists uh, sacrifice their blood for, uh, like, a tithing to a higher power. Some cultists uh, sacrifice their blood in the name of a higher power to prove their loyalty. Some do it in order to, to, to get, you know, mystical powers in the mortal, mortal plane and all of that stuff. Um, I honestly think as I search up for these golden apples, that I might be the first blood cultist in the history of forever, perhaps? That's doing it for brick paving. Okay, so, here we are. I have my golden apples. I have, well, I, I was gonna say I have my diamond, but as you can tell, I, I have uh, 15 uh, whole diamond blocks. Don't ask me how I got these. Uh, just, um, don't look too hard into it for your own good. Either way, it only needed one diamond for the sacrifice, I believe it said. So if I now right-click this diamond... No, hold on. Let's do the regeneration first. Let's right-click the diamond in here, and then let's start stabbing ourselves. Here we go. Let's fill this thing up with enough blood for a- oh, ow. Oh, really? The drift tree's bleeding? <laughs> really? I had no idea. I'm so glad that you could tell me that. I'm so glad I needed a message in chat to tell me that at this current moment, as I'm stabbing myself to pour blood all over the table and all over this diamond, that I might perhaps be bleeding. That- I am so glad you took the time out of your day to tell me that. Oh my god. But, death or no death, we do now have ourselves a lesser blood orb. So, if I grab this off of the pedestal now, well, I say lesser blood orb, this is a weak blood orb. If I uh, take this off the pedestal, put this back in my inventory, don't mind that, and have a look in the book, it should tell us what comes next. Here we go. To upgrade the blood altar, you need to craft blood runes and place them around the altar. Blood runes act as an upgrade to the altar, and by using more advanced versions of the blood runes, 
you can confer different effects on the altar. The basic version, the blank rune, does not give any upgrades. It is only its only use is to upgrade the tier of the altar. The blank rune. Okay, so that's a weak blood orb or any blood orb really, a blank slate and any type of stone from the looks of it. Yeah, here we go. So, in order to upgrade the blood altar to tier 2, you must place 8 blood runes around the altar. The runes in the cardinals can be upgraded, but the corner runes cannot act as upgrade runes until tier 3. The tier 2 blood altar, which has 8 total runes. Right. So, you see, I have 14,000 millibuckets of blood in this altar, and I kind of don't want to lose that, so I have a very interesting question to, uh, to ask here. Do you think I could perhaps put the blood altar inside of a cardboard box? I'm, I'm being serious, I'm not joking. There is, there is an item in this mod pack called the cardboard box that allows you to basically pick up and move tile entities. And when it comes to chests, it keeps the liquid inside. Now even though, as you can tell from the top corner there, the blood altar technically classes itself as a tank, I don't think it's gonna store that blood if I break it. So I am gonna go grab myself a cardboard box. Just down here and to the left, and you will find the uh, sawmill. There we are. So to function, to function, to use the sawmill, we need some oak logs. And thankfully, I had quite the abundance in my backpack. So if I take these oak logs now, shove them in the sawmill, this thing should start doing its thing, and it should eventually generate us some sawdust. So now if we take this sawdust, and we put it in a square in our inventory, there we go. It gives us a big fish, little fish cardboard box. And since the only tile entity that we're actually moving is, well, the, the blood altar, we don't actually need any more than one. Although we might not even need one if this turns out to not end up working. So, fingers crossed, three, two, one. <laughs> oh my god, I cannot believe that worked. <laughs> it's as fragile on the crate. Oh my god. <laughs> So, I think just for future proofing of this whole thing, we should put it up here on top of this mushroom, which can eventually be converted into a cool looking, uh, I don't know, sacrificial uh, tome or totem or giant sacrificial blocky area or whatever. But for now, just to future proof it to make sure it's high enough to receive the next tiers, I'm going to put it up here. And I was right, it kept the blood inside. <laughs> Oh my god. Right then, so, now that we've got this moved and in the uh, optimal position for the next upgrade, we should actually start work on making the next upgrade. So, here we have the layout for the Tier 2 Blood Altar. So, if I open up the Sanguine Scientium and go back, we can actually take another look at the Blank Rune crafting, uh, crafting recipe. So, how do we make a blank slate? Right, here we go. The Blood Altar's main use is the production of slates. Each tier of slate requires the previous tier and a more powerful altar than the last. Note that ethereal slates aren't currently, currently implemented by default, but maybe if you're playing in a mod pack. And I'm guessing ethereal slates is uh, the next step up from demonic? At, at a guess. Uh, but we don't need to worry about any of that right now. What we need to worry about right now is getting some stone, which I'm hoping it can be just plain stone or cobblestone. I think it might be smooth stone though. And putting that in here with a thousand life points, which we, we have enough for, we have a thousand four hundred. So now all we need to do is actually get our hands on some stone. I wonder where in the whole world of Minecraft we might find some smooth stone. I really wonder. Obviously, the answer was in my backpack. What do you take me for? I'm not gonna silk touch that. I'm not a peasant. <laughs> peasant. <laughs> Who silk touch stone? <laughs> what? 
do you think of me? But yeah, so let's just drop this stone into this here. And that should automatically begin the consumption process. You can actually see in the top left corner that it is actually going along, which is good. And there we go. We have ourselves a blank slate, which unfortunately for us doesn't have an EMC value. Because let's be real, if it did, we would not be doing this again. But either way, this blank slate is used in the crafting of, if we go back, the blank rune. And for that, we just need some more stone. And we have all of that in our inventory right there. So, uh, let's, oh wait, we need four of these. Ah, I guess it's time to start bleeding again. Right then, let's just uh, drop this one in here. And uh, let the uh, gothification of the drifter begin. I nearly overdid it. <laughs> and that's number two. And this will become number three. After that, however, I'm gonna need my om noms. My om nom 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 noms. And gimme. Okay, last one here. Let's put this stone down and let's start stabbing. Hopefully that's enough. Oh yeah, that's plenty enough. We're fine. Right then, so needing four blank runes, very easy process. All we have to do is four of these U shapes here. So that's two, three, and then four. And then we drop the rune on top. Like so, and what am I missing? I'm always missing something. Oh, of course, the blood orb, the thing that we made first. I, How did I forget the whole point of this was the blood orb? Uh, okay, let's let's just put this in. Boom, ba, ba da ba, boom, pow. There we go, that should be all four. One, two, three, four, nice and simple. And we even get the weak blood orb back, which is great, because if we had to make one every single time, we would be out of diamonds uh, very quickly. There we go, that's the corners done. Now I can either replace the cardinals with normal runes, uh, these, I mean, blank runes, not normal runes, or I can use these uh, effect-based runes. Now, if I was actually planning on delving into blood magic, I would probably want to go with some of these effect-based runes, because they can have some really good effects. But, um, but I just really want the bricks, and I'm gonna be completely honest, I don't really need any of the special runes for, to, to get in the bricks. All I need is a Magician Blood Orb, which is a, tier, a gold uh, block on a tier 3 altar, and to get a tier 3 altar, all I need is these regular uh, ruined blocks. So I think I might just make some more of these, which of course means I'm gonna have to keep stabbing myself for a little while. You know, I'm sure there's a joke to be made in here somewhere about my past lives bleeding since I was female and me now bleeding because I'm stabbing myself. There's some sort of connection there. There is some sort of joke to be made, but I am far too sleep deprived to make it. Something something can't get away from the bleeding even though I'm now male something something. Right then, so let's drop the stone onto the blood altar here and then start stabbing ourselves. And that should give us just, yeah, it gives us enough blood for this. So let's get the first rune. Brilliant, let's get the second rune now. So we actually need to fill up some, uh, free up some space there. Let's get the second one. Let's uh, stabby stab stab again. That gives us just enough for the second one. Let's eat another golden apple to get our regeneration back, like so. Now that that one's converted, let's, uh, let's grab this one too. Let's throw this up here. And, uh, let's put the third one on, and let's keep stabbing ourselves. Like so. Uh, that gives us, uh, more than enough for this, uh, third one, so let's, uh, just collect this now. There we go, and let's throw the fourth one on here as well. Let's just eat another golden apple. Just get our health up, nice and quickly, nice and simply. And, uh, stabby stab. Lovely, so, now that we've done that, we can go and fill these in. And we will then have access to our tier 2 blood altar. You know, I think being a vampire and drinking blood is less morbid than whatever it is we're doing. And in goes the stone, and in goes the blank slate, and the blood orb. And that gives us three blank runes, and we're missing the last one because we don't actually have enough stone. There we go, we've got all four of the extra runes now. Boop, bam, bada, ba, boop. Pow. There we go, tier 2 blood altar completed. Nice and lovely. So, 
Let's now have a look at the Sanguine sci sci Scientium again. I, for some reason, I'm struggling to say that word now. I said it perfectly before, and now I can't say it properly. That's, that's actually getting on my nerves. Either way, Sanguine Scientium. Let's have a look, shall we? Okay, so after we've upgraded to the Tier 2, this is what the book says. <clears throat> now that you have a Tier 2 altar, you can look into getting life essence from somewhere other than yourself. The Dagger of Sacrifice will allow you to sacrifice any mob, monster, or passive that stands within two blocks of your altar, kill instantly killing them and granting you a decent sum of LP. You can increase the amount you get per kill with runes of sacrifice. Different entities give different amounts of LP. Check your configs for more info. So as it, it is quite literally telling me, I can now create a dagger of sacrifice to stab people to bleed into the altar. This is getting incredibly messed up, I'm not even gonna lie. So, next up, oh dear lord. To upgrade the blood altar to tier 3, place 5 blood runes, 1 block down, and 2 blocks away from the previous set of runes along each edge. Then, place two blocks indicated by the stone breaks in each corner, starting above the new rings of runes, and then cap each pillar with glowstone blocks. And to check that it is successfully upgraded, use a divination sigil to check the tier. Note that any non-air block can be used for the pillars below the glowstone. The tier 3 blood altar, which has 28 total runes, 20 more than a tier 2, Five on each side. So if I visualize this, this this has really got it out for me, hasn't it? Okay, I'm well. For one thing, I'm certainly glad I can fly. I'm not even gonna lie. This would be a hell of a lot more tedious if I couldn't. Um, but it does mean we are gonna have to make a lot more of uh, a lot more of those rooms. But actually, I think there might be a way to automate this. Not to bring science into our, um, clearly, uh, far from scientific ways of doing things here. But I reckon if I got the create mod involved here, I think I could create an automatic blood farm. And you know what? I'm gonna do just that. Okay, so checklist of things that I will need in order to create an automatic blood farm. Number one is a conveyor belt. Number two is a funnel, a funnel system, a brass funnel system. Number three, rotational power. Number four, uh, one of those uh, doohickeys that allow you to use stuff. Oh, I'm so, I'm so good at names. I'm so good at names. If I type in create, I'll, I'll be able to remember it. It's uh, not the mechanical arm, the deployer. There we go. If I use the deployer, give it the sacrificial knife. It should kill things for me. From there, I just have to funnel in uh, the uh, stone and funnel out the runes. By the time I'm done with this blood altar, there is going to be nothing mystic about you. Mark my words. Okay, so, though it may look a little jank, this is the system that I have come up with. Um, to explain my thought process here, because I know it's quite a lot, uh, essentially over there you throw stone, that stone then gets thrown into the breast funnel, which then gets thrown into the blood altar, which is currently empty. What that uh, blood altar then does is when it's full of blood, it will turn the stone into the uh, uh, rune thing, and after turning the stone into the rune thing, it will drop it out onto the conveyor belt, bring it along the conveyor belt all the way down here and put it in the chest. Now, as for these deployers, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into the book and I'm going to go back a second and I'm going to build a dagger of sacrifice, okay? I'm going to build three daggers of sacrifice, which is three iron swords, and um, I'm going to put them in the deployer's hands. Then what I'm going to do is go on a kidnapping spree. So, let's try that, shall we? We need something that has a lot of health and will bleed a lot, okay? And I think I have the perfect mob in mind. Which again, very morbid. How do I hand you this dagger? 
You're in you're in placement mode, I think. You're not in use mode, right? If I if I stand here and just have this thing stab me. Yeah, it's it's not stabbing me. It's not in use mode. How do I turn it into you there we go. So now if it hits me, it should hurt. Yeah, there we go. It took quite a bit of health there. And I think some of it went in there. There's only one meter test though, that's 1,400. And now it is... Still 1,400. I think it requires the death of a uh, creature, but that's fine. Um, so, next up, let's throw the second sword in here. Let's stick you in there, and let's set you to attack mode. There we go. And last but not least, let's create the final one of these daggers. And would you look at that? The rain has finally stopped. Blood sacrifices do work after all, everybody. We, we can go home, we can pack up. Organized religion? Dunzo. Otherworldly cults? Dunzo. Agnostics? Dunzo. We have found the one true religion. Blood magic. And there we go, with the final dagger of sacrifice in hand. If we set this to kill mode... There we go, let's eat up a golden apple so we don't accidentally farm ourselves. What we can do now is... Let's chuck some stone on here, just some plain old stone. And then we need to now grab what is known as a capture net. So if I get capture... Rat... Oh! Well, what do you know? We don't have a rat capture net anymore. Now that is interesting. Is there anything we can use to pick up mobs? Here we go, mob imprisonment tool. For this, we need a uh, plastic or HPDE and a ghast tier, which actually isn't too bad. How do you make Ava plastic? You smelt leather. We're going with Ava plastic. And what do you know? We have one leather right here in this backpack. So if we kick this up here, drop this in here. We can just then smelt up this leather. Now, while fighting ghasts might not be too big of an issue, I do really want to check the computer back at Anadonia HQ just to make sure that, you know, we don't already have some. Because on the off chance that we do, I really don't want to have to go and fight one unnecessarily. And what do you know? We don't actually have a ghast tier. Can you craft a ghast tier just out of curiosity? You can from gassed essence, and you can from catalyzing glands. Which, um, now that I think about it, those drop pretty frequently. Do we have any, just, yeah, we have two glands in here. We're short one, but I'm pretty sure we just have some lying around. So let me just look for some of those really quick. And what do you know, right here in this very... Well, I was going to say this is the very first chest, but to tell a lie, I searched every other chest before this one. But in this chest, we did have one individual catalyzing gland, which means that combined with the other two that we had in the ME storage system, we can craft ourselves a ghast tier. There we go, three catalyzing glands all together gets us a ghast tier, which actually has an EMC value, meaning that we could, if we wanted to, go out of our way to duplicate the ghast tier. Although before I do go ahead and duplicate the ghast tier, I actually want to check mob containment device. Oh, it has its own EMC value of 4,204, which is only 200 EMC above the ghast tier, which I'm guessing the rest of it must come from the plastic. And there we go, we got our colorless Pokeball. And while we most certainly aren't aiming to catch them all, the question of the hour is, who are we capturing first? I think I already know what I want to capture first. Come here. How do I get you? Well, that was easy. I suppose now the question is, how do I make it stay in place long enough to die? Yeah, see, it floats off. What if I just place it down intermittently before... <coughs> Yeah, now come back here. <laughs> it does half a heart of damage. <laughs> I don't suppose there's any way we could speed this up, is there? Would a watch of flowing time work on a create uh, mechanism? I, I, I honestly don't know. Um, let's see, while I'm at it, 
since that one seems to be staying still like a good little boy. Let's grab another one. If we put this one down here. I think I might have broken their AI. If they take damage, get picked up and put down. Oh, no, I spoke too soon. Wait, is it trying to- it's trying to attack the hands. That's pretty funny. Oi, no escaping. We don't mention that. There we- Wait, that thing regenerated health! Hang on! Okay, you know what? Let's choose a non-flying mob for our next test run, shall we? Okay, so for our, for our next test run of the sacrificial thing, I think I may have picked the perfect prisoner. Uh... Or maybe not. Is there any way I can get the fish to stand? It's dead. Okay. So things that can take to the air, clearly out of the equation, and things that can only swim, also out of the equation. Mobs that spawn at night, eh, not so much. So, now that it is finally night time, I think we go on the patrol for any evil no-good do-wells. I butchered that sentence horribly. I say we go on the hunt for any evildoers, for any ne'er-do-wells that dare to trespass on these sacred lands. For example, yoink! I will never get over how astronomically funny it is to just yoink a mob. Let's try this one, shall we? Okay, not quite what I had in mind. Let's uh, just put you back there, shall we? There has to be a way of stopping them from running. Well, either way, these guys clearly aren't working either. What am I supposed to use? What does it want from me? What can I use that won't fight back? Some part of me wants to feel regret or uh, dismay at the decision I have made, but the other part of me really wants to test if this thing will siphon off blood. So, let's make a compromise. I really need to fix that. You know what? You know what? Before I do anything else, you know what? Let's let's fix that. Let's fix that issue, shall we? Where where have I put all of my stuff? Okay, it's going to start losing its pretty factor very quickly, but right now I want function, goddammit. Okay. There is no way any sort of prisoner that is being put in this hole is escaping now. So, let me find something that isn't gonna fight back. You. Or should I say Moo? Comedic genius at work here. Alright, let's see you're trying to escape that one, you little mushroom. God damn it. Stay there and die. Yes! Stay there and die. Stay there and die. Okay, everybody. New plan. Okay, and so with a stick and some redstone, we can make a redstone torch, which should activate these fans. I have no idea if they're working or not. I'm about to find out very soon. So, if I now grab... You know what? I'll, la I'll name you. Lady Dimitrescu. That's it. Your name is Lady Dimitrescu. You should not be able to move now. Yep, you are stuck there. So, you know how one of the early signs for psychopathy in children is the torture of small animals? I... This isn't the same, right? This... This... This This isn't the same, right? This... <laughs> I'm, I'm not... I'm not turning into a psychopath, right? You know what? Don't answer that question. Sorry, buddy. You're not going anywhere. You're gonna be our first blood sacrifice. <laughs> I am concerned that that one isn't moving, though, and I'm not sure why it isn't. Unless it's the redstone current that's stopping it? If it means the certified death of uh, Lib Lady Dimitrescu, Moo, then I honestly don't care. It was! It was the redstone, it was the redstone signal. 
It was the redstone signal. So how much blood do I get from killing you? I actually am very curious. I'm also not sure how you broke out of that fan's control, but I'm not gonna question that. That didn't give us anything, which is concerning. Why didn't that give us anything? You know, I have a question. I have a question and I need answers. Give me your sacrificial dagger. G give it here. I want it. Mine. Not yours, you div. This one. Okay, so. If that was all for nothing, um, I'm not gonna be very happy. So, let me steal Lady Dimitrescu Mu the second. Or in shorthand, Lady Dimitrescu Mu two. I can't believe I got that right first try. <laughs> Alright, so, this is within two blocks, so you're going to die now. It did! It gave blood. It didn't give a lot of blood, but it gave blood. So that means the deployers don't count as people. Yay. Well, since all of that was a bust, I kinda need to take this stuff down now so I can actually make room for the second layer of the altar, so, uh... Th there's nothing in here, right? Let me, uh... Let me set this so it just accepts stone, first of all. <clears throat> then let me throw some stone on here. So, I don't know how many of these blank slates I need, I just know I need to keep killing uh, and reviving myself using golden apples, so I guess I'm gonna do that now until I have enough of these blank slates to build up tier 2, which should be, if I check the book, actually, before I get started. It's an extra 20 runes. I'm gonna need 20 of these little guys right here. I'm gonna need 20 of these guys right here. Ooh, actually, this is my last gold map. I better go EMC this while that's uh, draining blood. And I think, looking at it, that should be just enough blood now in this altar for the, I'm guessing, stack of stone that was in here. So if I now just eat another one of these golden apples to regen my health, I can watch as this hopefully completes uh, the uh, sh shale slab things. I'm really not the best at remembering names. Yep, that's just done, and it's kicked out what I'm assuming is an entire stack of these blank slates. And I should hope so, considering it took me, what, how much did it take me? 63,000 liters of my blood to make? I'm surprised I'm not so far past anemic, I've become a fucking skeleton. Either way, um, I, I don't think we need to wait for this conveyor belt to reach the end. Uh, I think we can just grab this. You know, these conveyor belts are usually better when they move faster than the slowest person on Earth's uh, walking speed. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna grab these now. Okay, so even though I only need 20 new ones of these uh, magic slate things, I now have 64 blank slates. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some smooth stone from wherever I've put it, and I'm gonna quickly make the upgrade to the tier three altar. Da 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 Okay, and so if we look at the little tab on the top left here, it says all very clear in plain text English that we have achieved the tier three altar. So the final step here with these altars is to bleed myself over a block of gold. And that should give me the necessary, uh, the upgrade to the weak blood orb, the magician's blood orb that I need to craft the stone paths. So let's do this. It's constantly running out. It consumes 20 life points per tick. How the hell am I supposed to keep up with that? How do I keep up with that? 
Okay, maybe there's a little bit more to this than I thought. I guess I'm just not bleeding properly. I, I guess there's a proper way to bleed now. Uh, okay, maybe I need a bigger knife. What do I need? I need, I need something that can enable me to take 20 life points at a time. I need instant regeneration. That's what I need. I need the ability to instantly rege regenerate. Gee, it's almost like my character's a time lord. But let's Google... Well, rather, let's check if there are any things in the mod pack that allow us to regenerate at a really quick rate. Because by the time I sacrifice my health like this, it's all but gone. Because I can't eat the apples quick enough. Unless I do it like this. That was actually kind of working for a second. Okay, that's the new plan. No, we were so close. We were halfway there. Uh, if we can cut out the time it takes to eat the apple, we might have something here. I don't even know how to get up here without my flying rig. We were close. We didn't get there, but we were close, which means we might be onto something here. Like I said, an auto feeder would be really good. But I don't think we have an auto feeder. We don't have a baconator in this. Surely Project E has something for this, right? Something that would heal you when it's nearby. Lifestone. Restores both hunger and hearts. Half a heart and shank every 0.25 seconds. This is from the soul stone and the body stone. If I, how? Red matter. I think we could do this, you know. I genuinely think we have what it takes to make this. If we make a life stone, set it up nearby, it constantly heals us while we're damaging ourselves, we can just bleed indefinitely onto the gold block. Buckle up then, witches. I guess this thing got a whole lot more interesting. So, in order to make the soul stone, we need two bits of red matter. Red matter comes from dark matter in Aetonalis fuel, and dark matter comes from Aetonalis fuel in a block of diamond. We have the diamond. I don't know if we have Aetonalis fuel, because I don't have any in my inventory, and I'm pretty sure that Ruby logged off with the only Aetonalis fuel we have. So unless we've got like a secret stash lying around somewhere, which for once, we don't, then we're gonna have to make some from scratch, which isn't gonna be great. To make Aetonalis fuel, you need a Philosopher's Stone and Mobius fuel, and to make, uh, Mobius fuel, you need... Get alchemical coal, and alchemical coal comes from coal in a philosopher's stone. So we can make it, it's just gonna be very, and I mean very, time consuming. Now, if we just click on the soul stone, hey presto, we got it. Now, what does this do in hand? I don't think it actually does anything in hand. This is one of the few things you actually have to put down, but the important part is it can be put down. So if we now bring this over and put it on here, like so. How quick does this act? Very quickly. It does have an annoying noise. But, you know what? Okay, so you go on there, and then you go on there, and then you go on there, like that. How far is the range? You know what, I don't care. Nearby players is nearby players. Uh, I, had, I do have two more, actually. I could go get two more podiums, but I think this should actually be enough, all things considered. So if I stab myself now... Oh yeah, that is not gonna let me die. There we go. This is nice and good. This is better than golden apples. Here we go. Here we go. You've just gotta be really careful not to overdo it. It's also very loud. Oh my god. <laughs> you know what? I think that might be enough. Let's just see. Yep, there we go. Right there. Oh. <laughs> oh, we have ourselves a magician's blood orb. Stores raw life essence. <laughs> Uh
This was wonderful. I'm so <laughs> glad. I'm so oh glad we have Project E. Uh, although I am now slightly traumatized because every time I hear my flying ring go off, it is it is giving me flashbacks to repeatedly stabbing myself over a pool of my own blood so that I can infuse it with gold. So, now that we have the Magician's Blood Orb, what we can do is we can turn this from at Project E back into at Blood Magic. We can then find the recipe for the Stone Path. All we need here is, I'm guessing, smooth stone. So let's head on back over to the main Anadonia shack so that we can get our hands on some. Here we go. So now if I come up here and I shift click this, I get myself some stone path. So if I do this, I'm assuming, yeah, there we go. Now, unfortunately, this does not have an EMC value. However, considering that now it is just a matter of smooth stone, which does, surrounding the magician's blood orb, I think we're going to do just fine. Okay, so that is <laughs> about it, to be honest. I think we're done for the day. Um, we have achieved every goal we set out to do. We did even more than we set out to do because we actually managed to create several <laughs> soul stones. So um, as long as I have some of these around, I essentially just can't die in my base, which is pretty powerful, not going to lie. Uh, but yeah, that is... That is it for today's episode of Starsick. Like I said, bit of an unusual one, but since it is the first one back since I took my break, I figure it'd be better to ease us in this way. That being said, uh, with everything else done and accounted for, the next time you see me, we will be doing a small time lapse. Now, unfortunately, I will get this out of the way now, so I don't have to disclaimer it later. Although, to be honest, I still might. Uh, the replay mod, still very broken. I only manage to get tiny bits here and there. So uh, the next episode's time lapse is probably going to be very broken or it's going to miss a lot. There's nothing I can do about that, I'm afraid, and I apologize in advance. That being said, it will be definitely worth it because in the next episode, when you come back, when we next see each other, we will have improved our boring old starsick base into something beautiful but yeah if you liked this video make sure to leave a like down below if you uh, have something you want to say about the video <laughs> be it the contents or me or something you found funny then please leave a comment in the uh, i was gonna say in the description down below in the comment section down below make sure to check out the description however for all of my social media links, the links to the new Discord, since the old one got hacked and deleted, uh, the links to uh, all of my social media, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I think I've covered the basics there. Like, subscribe, comment, and uh, yeah, in case I don't see you, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night. See you later, guys. Bye-bye!